Okay, so in the last episode, we just read part 21, An Incision, which ended up with um, one of the heirs basically conquering like three kingdoms. And then, the, and then Arx said that this is where I want, this is where I went when I died. Let us establish our thrones here at the conquered three kingdoms. For I am Arx, the first navigator, and I shall charge to death, and my throne shall be carved up, Osmio. Now we are on part 22, the high war. Verse 3 of 2, the high war. Now, in this time of diaspora, there was a war between Arx a war between Arx and Saphathun and Zivu Arath. Okay, so like, basically, um, they're referring to like a time of diaspora, which basically diaspora means when like a large group of people flee. So, I guess if you were to hear the term diaspora, a large group of people fleed or a large group of people immigrated because of something and I guess that it was because there was a war between Arx, Saphathun, and Zivu Arath. Remember, Arx used to be the heir Arash, Saphathun used to be the heir Sathona, and Zivu Arath used to be the heir Exiro, in which they were all related. But I guess they formed a war or something like that. Anyways, Brother Arx, said Savathun, do not forgive my betrayal. Instead, take vengeance upon me for what I did at the dry moon. And Arx made war on her. In worship of the deep. <clears throat> Between them stood Zivu Arath, saying, Stop, or I, such as Zivu Arath, will kill you. War is mine, and I am strongest. As in, Zivarath thinks that war is his, and that he, that he slash Zivarath is the strongest. And I guess this aspect right here, um, so Savadun is saying, like, I guess Savadun betrayed Arx at one point. And Savathun is trying to turn Arx against Savathun for like a reason. Arx said Savathun. Savathun said, do not forgive my betrayal. Anyways, this was how they worshipped. This was how the heirs worshipped. For 20,000 years, the heirs fought across the moons and the heirs fought in the abyssal plains and the lightning palaces of each other's sword spaces, dimensions. And the heirs, the immortal heirs, killed each other again and again so that they could practice death. They could practice death. Remember, they cannot die because they're immortal. But I guess they can just practice it by trying to kill each other. But anyways, they can't really kill each other because they're immortal. Anyways, such was their love. At last, the many moons came to many worlds. And it was time to go to war on life. Arx said, I shall establish a court. And whoever comes into this court, Arx's court, may challenge me. My court will be the high war. My court will be a killing ground and a school of the sword logic we have learned from our gods. Saphadun thought this was a great idea. Saphadun made a court called the High Coven. Sifu Arath said, The world is my court, wherever there is war. 
wherever there is a war that is safe and rather to court. Okay, so like basically the aspect is they said that it was time to go to war on life. I guess they're going to like start like a war or chaos on a human planet where there's extra life. And basically they're talking about courts. Each one owning a court and there's going to be chaos at the courts. And then there's this sentence right here. Anyways. Part 13. Fire without fuel. Verse 3 of 3. Fire without fuel. I killed my sister today. My sister came to this star to oversee the formation. Or my sister came to this star to oversee the extermination of all life here. The Kwugu are a strong power, and the Kwugu's fleets protect four nearby stars. Protect four nearby stars. As herd animals, the Kwugu are loyal and stubborn, but the Kwugu do not show grace. This is what the Kwugu are. of years of evolution, the Kwugu have been infected by a virus so insidious that the virus wrote itself into the Kwugu's genome because the virus is so strong. The virus compels the Kwugu to offer their limbs, to offer their limbs voluntarily for amputation by enormous Sessile jaw beasts. They venerate, the Kwugu venerate these jaw beasts and treat the jaw beasts as gods. So the Kwugu treat the jaw beasts as gods. The virus converts Kwugu cells into eggs from which strange crawling things pupate. To live within the jaw beast gut. In turn, or in response of these eggs living in their gut, the jaw beast extrudes sweet nectar for the Kwugu to drink. And they have brilliant visions. So if the Kwugu drink this stuff, they get brilliant visions. I guess it's like a drug concoction. Anyways, Savathun and her broods, young I guess, have liberated the Kwugu from jaw beasts and indeed from existence. But as they chased the Kwugu Ark ships, but as Savadun and the Brutes chased the Kwugu Ark ships, I stopped in to vaporize my sister's warship and a few of her underlings. I want to dwell on the ruins a while and punish Savadun for falling. Or I want to dwell on the ruins of the defeating Savadun's Savadun's ships for a while, and punish Savadun for failing to guard her flank. So the reason why Savadun is being attacked is because Savadun is being attacked by one of her relatives, and they do this for fun. But anyways, anyways, they are like us, these Kwugu are like us because the Kwugu are bound in symbiosis. What that means is that the heirs, like Savadun, are bound in symbiosis to the worm gods, whereas the Kwugu are bound in symbiosis to these jaw beasts that they treat as gods. Anyways, I feel joy 
and sorrow. I feel them as titanic things, because I am larger than my body. My mind is now a cosmos of its own. I know more joy and more anguish than the entire Quogo race could ever experience. I know more joy and I know more anguish than the entire Quogo race could ever experience. Um, anyways. Sorrow because we have killed so much. So this person feels sorrow because this person, as well as others, have killed so much. And I think they, like, exterminated the Quogu or something like that. Anyways, sorrow because we have killed so much. 18 species. We have killed this century alone. Do you need to open this for a few minutes or we get along? So I was interrupted, but anyways, sorrow, because we slash the heirs have killed so much. We have killed 18 species in this century alone. And joy for the same reason, so they feel sorrow because we have killed so much. But they also feel joy for the same reason. So they're sorry, but they feel some type of joy for some reason. Joy that we have put down these blights or inconveniences. Scoured these blights away and left the universe clean, ready to move towards its final shape. The, for, we removed these blights and left the universe clean so that the universe can move towards its final shape. We are a, we are a wind of progress, ripping parasites from the material world. For if they were not parasites, so they tried to justify themselves by ripping the parasites from the material world. But they also say, for if they were not parasites, we would be unable, we would not be able to kill them, and they would still exist. Although, you know, remember their motto about the deep is survival of the fittest. Anyways, and what is that final shape? This hypothetical final shape is a fire without fuel burning forever, killing death, asking a question that is its own answer, entirely itself. So I guess you could say the final shape would be people become their own master, essentially. Survival of the fittest. It's not a really good explanation, but, you know, it's kind of similar to that. Anyways, that is what we must become. My worm grows fat and hungry. My worm, or I feed the worm with the whole worlds. So, because the heirs are exploiting things and dominating things in response to the worm. It, their worm that gives them this power is growing fat and hungry. I slash the heirs feed it, feed the worm with whole worlds of destruction. My astronomers tell me they can sense the deep itself and that we are conquering our way towards it. I think joy and sorrow will be the same thing soon, like love and death. Okay, now on part, um, I think this is 19, the screen, verse 3 of 4, the screen. No, 
Savathun, Sivurath, my siblings. We are betrayed. We will never live eternal. Our might shatters entire species. We inhale the smoke of their burning. We inhale the smoke of the burning species. Like trying to claim dominance. This is our compact with the worm, our God. The worm makes us mighty. But as we wield this might, our worm's hunger expands. Because, you know, they were already warned about this beforehand. If Savathun, Sivu, Arab, and Arks exploit things, or basically turn away from their original nature because of their power, their worm's hunger is going to grow in, a, in response. And basically they're just going to be forced to do certain things that they wouldn't necessarily do in the first place. Anyways, if we fail to feed the worm, the worm will devour us from within. We have exterminated 306 worlds, so obviously they have become corrupted, and now I am certain my worm's hunger grows faster than the might I draw from it. From it. So, now what that means is that because of the worm's hunger, um, Sivu rather, Sedona, etc., they need to conquer so that they do not die by the worm. But, you know, that's their own fault for becoming corrupted. Anyways, my worm's hunger grows faster than the might I draw from it. We are bound by our covenant to the worm to, our, to obey our nature. Eternal search, eternal cunning, eternal conquest. But as we do this, my siblings, as we search for, you know, eternal conquest and things like that, we feed our worms in response. And the more we feed our worms by conquering, the hungrier the worms get, and the bigger the worms grow, faster and faster. Soon, my siblings, we will be so mighty, and our worms so hungry, that not with all our might could we possibly feed them. So eventually, if the heirs keep on conquering, keep on conquering and decimating, the worms will get so hungry that even with all the might of the three heirs, we could possibly feed them, I guess. Or even with all the might of the three heirs in the future, we would not be able to feed the worms and we will be devoured. So, you know, they do, they do not want to die. What can we do? Part 20. Dictata. I-R. That go or that cow. Verse 3 of 5. Dictata. I-R. That cow. Attention. Perimeter security units attend. Stand by to assimilate. New imperatives. Gland 60 proof assimilation liquor or face immediate non compliance taxation. The Dagao Ministry of War is now online and true. I guess the Dagao aspect is like another force or a ship or something like that. In radial ear. 989 Groove 3 Our 
clients in the Dachau Nest salvaged an interstellar spacecraft. This spacecraft hull isotopes date the craft's construction to 24,000 years ago, years ago. So because of these aspects, I guess um, data points or history, it constructs the craft to be constructed 24,000 years ago. Around the same time, the fundament system dropped out of contact with our amiable ecumene semantic spike EI Praga Mercenary Explorers Disposable Class So Mercenary Explorers are these disposable class discovered an organism frozen in stasis deep within the hull of the spacecraft. These mercenary explorers claims to be or this organism that was found claims to be Teox, member of a protohive species. During debriefing, Teox provided the records of the fall of the Ammonite civilization and vital intelligence. Teox provided vital intelligence about the, the motives, biology, and leadership of the hive. Negative reinforcement, bomb, axon, 8x8, inflict something. Over the past century, parameter security units of the Ecumene Status Army have failed to halt hive incursions on 17 separate worlds. So the army has failed to halt hive encounters on 17 separate worlds. All the species in the uh, uh, all the species in the Ecumene, I guess a planet face extinction from the hive. Positive reinforcement Reward Axon 11XVV2 Inspire Decapitate Defer Promote Dachau Strategic Dicta for Victory Against the Hive Identify Supreme Hive Leadership Organisms Arash, Sedona, and Xiro so, I guess Arash, Sedona, and Xiro are considered now to be Suprema Hive leadership personnel. Remember, Arash is Arx, Sedona is Savadun, and Xiro is Sivu Arath. And I guess, um, after getting their powers, they went on to become a Supreme Hive leadership personnel. Anyways, target these entities with maximum data overkill. Target these entities with maximum data overkill. Kdometric release authorized. Prosecute targets whenever they manifest. Hive cohesion will crumble. Total victory over the hive will be achieved by clean sweep genocide. Enact impulse. Endora Vic Vindicator. So in this paragraph, they're just there's like a new force, a force to eliminate the hive. And they figured out they are um they basically heard a backstory from Teox, who is from a previous from long ago, and Teox describing, like, the motives of the Hive, and that these are the leaders of the Hive, are 
Ash, aka Arks, Sedona, aka Savadun and Exiro, aka Sivo Arath, that these people are the leaders of the hive, and these people need to be eliminated. Anyways, part 20, or XXVI, star by star, verse 3 of 6, star by star, by star, beneath a green fire sky in the throne world of King Arcs, our lords embrace. We, the Hive, watch as Savathun puts her arm around Sivu Arath. And in response, Sivu Arath clasps forearms with Arcs. And in response, Arcs takes Savathun by the shoulder. They are huge, huge, and they burn with a furious power. They are huge and burn with furious power. Talking about these immortal beings. But this embrace is weakness, and we despise it. Never before have we despised our lords. Have our lords, aka have these people, failed us because of showing some type of weakness action? We the hive have been driven back world by world. Quote, I am at my end, Savathun says. I plot and plan, but I cannot gather enough bloodshed to feed my worm. So, Savathun is having a problem with her worm, that she cannot sustain the worm's hunger with bloodshed. And the harder I try to feed the worm with bloodshed, the hungrier the worm becomes. Basically like a curse the worm has become, but you know, that's what Savathun gets for becoming corrupted. Quote, I slaughter and kill, Sivarath says, but the harder I fight people by slaughtering and, cook and killing them, the, war the more my worm demands. I too am at my end. Sivu Arath is finally facing the consequences of his actions. Quote, the Akumene war angels have killed so many times. Arks said that I dare not go out into the universe lest I need to, lest I need my might to protect myself. My worm chews at my soul in hunger. Is this the end of our crusade? So is the worms becoming too hungry? The end of the crusade of Sivarath, Arks, and Savadun? Are we the hive unworthy to exist because of the worm's hunger? Sivu Arath puts down her great hand. Sivu Arath puts down her great head. We should retire and gather our strength. Taking it out. Savathun closes her eyes in puzzled defeat. Quote, we should beg the worm. We should beg the worm, our god, to tell us what to do. A.K.A. reminder, because of the long actions of the heirs destroying things and conquering things, the worm's hunger has become too extreme. And now, because the worm's hunger has become too extreme, these people, the heirs, do not know what to do in order to sustain the worm's hunger. So, Savathun said, we should beg the worm, our god, to tell us what to do, because they do not know what to do. But King Arx, who knows best,
Best, the beauty of the final shape roars at them. Quote, have you learned nothing? Would you deny our purpose? Survival of the fittest. Whatever we do, we will, we will do by killing, by an act of war and might. That is the final arbitrator we serve. That violent arbitrator we serve. And if we turn away from this arbitrator, if we turn away from our master, from it, we deserve to be eaten. No, we must obey our natures. We must be long-sighted and cunning and strong. We must take this gift that the worm our God has given us. Take this challenge and find a way to keep existing. Find a way to keep existing. But how will we feed our worms? Siva Rav asks. I know a way, says Cunning Savathun. I know a way, but it will not work unless we are killing the Akumene by the billions. How can we beat the Akumene? How can we beat the Akumene if the Akumene have war angels? If we cannot beat the Akumene's strengths, says Zivu Rath, we must infect the Akumene's weakness, says. But the Akumene are lords of matter and physical law. So that's why the Akumene are so powerful, because the Akumene are lords of matter and physical law. Quote, I know a way, King Art says, but it will require great power. More power than any of us can claim. So Arx has a plan to destroy the Akumene, but it's going to be a very difficult plan. Quote, then kill me, says Sifu Arath, and use that killing logic, the power you prove by killing something as mighty as me. So King Arx took up his blade, and King Arx beheaded Sifu Arath. Alright, so, reminder. Arx is immortal. Siva Arath is immortal. Basically, they need to figure out a way in order to feed their worms. Because if they do not feed the worms, the worms will kill Arx and kill Siva Arath. So, Arx is immortal. Siva Arath is immortal. There's a plan which they went through, which Arx. The immortal one, be it Siva Wrath, another mortal one. And I guess they find some sort of power in order to feed the worms because of an immortal god killing another immortal god. They get some power in response. Anyways, quote, and strangle me, says Sathona. And strangle me. Also, says Savathun, holding a blade behind her back. Use that killing logic. The cunning you prove by killing something as smart as me. So if... Alright, so... It's not a very difficult concept. Arx is immortal. Sivo Wrath is immortal, Sedona is immortal. If Sivo Wrath dies, an immortal one dies, then some sort of power will be absorbed by Arx. And now if Sedona dies, some sort of power will, will be absorbed by Arx in order to feed the worm's hunger. Anyways, but King Arx turned with the 
speed and might of Zevo Wrath, and King Arx beheaded Safadun before she could move. King Arx was the first navigator with the map of death. These were true deaths, for they happened in the sword world. So I guess King Arx killing Zevo Wrath and King Arx killing Septo Savathun correlated to that these deaths were true deaths for the deaths happened in the sword world. Then Arx went to the worm named Akka. Alright, so the next episode I will start on this chapter right here.